What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Toronzo Show. Thank y'all for tuning in again. No, but for real, I appreciate all the support that y'all been showing me across all the platforms. I always want to start off by saying that. Um, and y'all really showed out this past episode. Uh, my TikTok is fucking booming. My YouTube is booming, especially the shorts. Um, Facebook, y'all showed out. Instagram, y'all showed out. Threads, y'all showed out. Y'all always retweet me on Twitter. I really appreciate all the support. I cannot say it enough. Y'all only driving me to do more shit. Um, a couple of things. I have a lot of stuff to talk about, actually. But I first want to start off by saying I appreciate everybody who reached out to me um, when I was sick, because y'all know I had the flu and I was really fucked up. So people was reaching out, asking me, was I okay? Offering to send me stuff, and I only can appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. If you motherfuckers did not reach out to me, ask me, was I okay? I hope your next condom gives out on you, and you'll deal with the consequences of whatever that comes. And so. Reach out next time, whores, because I always ask people, are they fucking okay when they get sick and stuff? So don't be a dick. But yeah, um, a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Also did a review. This is clearly not the Cherry Berry Drake. This is actually a Bud Light. Surprise. And I'm drinking it through a straw. So that tells you where I am in life. But I did a review on the Cherry Berry Drink through Chick-fil-A. And um, it was pretty good. They got a couple different kinds, Sunjoy, Lemonade, Frozen, or whatever. Um, It's strong as fuck. They definitely made it to be a chaser. That I know for sure. You cannot convince me otherwise. That shit is strong. It tastes like just straight syrup on ice, low key. But the syrup is so good, it ain't like, it's not measurable to get through. So I would try it. I would definitely try it. But yeah, that's on only YouTube and TikTok, I think. Yeah, that's only on YouTube and TikTok. Um, what else? It feels fucking good outside. I done narrowed this asshole up real good. I narrowed this cat, my underarms, legs, and my arms. And um, I'm ready to party, baby. That's all I was waiting on. Get this narrow going. Now all I got to do is shade this up a little bit, do something with this head of mine. And we is up from here. We going to rock out with our cock out. I don't know where I'm going yet. I am going to see Don't Call Me White Girl on May the 8th, I want to say. I want to say it's May the 8th here in Atlanta. If y'all ain't got tickets shit, go fucking get them because that's my girl. That's what got me wanting to do podcasts in the first place. So shout out to Don't Call Me White Girl. Um, and yeah, a lot of stuff I want to talk about today. One of the main things I want to start with is I've been seeing over the last couple of weeks of how messy people have been being on fucking social media, like telling each other's business on, shows, on social media. There should be no reason where you and your friend or family there should be no reason when you and your friends or family are arguing on social media back and forth and y'all airing each other's business out when y'all both got each other's phone number and or each other's address. That does not make any sense. And it's kind of disgusting and tasteless and you bitches have no class at all. There will never be a situation where me and my friend arguing back and forth on fucking social media telling each other's business and then you expect me to be friends with this motherfucker again a week after that are you kidding me no fuck you after that and you're lucky i don't try to come and fuck you up because who does that y'all are weird and i guess y'all kind of align yourself with anybody but we don't get down like that over here nobody needs to know that your baby daddy missed his last three child support payments on facebook and nobody needs to know that your baby mom and his soul 300 dollars for food stamps to get a bald-headed ass hair done it just does not need to happen mind your business and if you cannot mind your business in between you and somebody else go to that person and you hash it out with them you don't take shit to social media and then y'all get mad on top of that that people have so much input about your life or stuff that you're saying or the stuff that you're posting is because you didn't told them every goddamn thing and of course they're gonna form opinions about you because you are forming you form the opinion of you so it doesn't make any fucking sense but yeah it's just the dumbest thing even down to when people be posting like their kids, like when kids do something bad or, you know, they do something like in school and they call themselves recording the kids and, you know, embarrassing them and stuff like that. That is the most disgusting. The parents need their ass whoop, to be honest, the ones that's doing stuff like that. Because can you imagine? And then on top of that, if the kids, okay, the kid go and commit suicide, though here at the Toronto Show, we do not condone any type of suicide, anything like that. But shit does happen, and you put yourself, you put your child in that situation, and or your parents. I didn't see kids, you know, post a, you know, parents' business and stuff like that on there too, and they do something to harm themselves, or you know, you out on like a DL guy and stuff like that. People were actually fucking off themselves, and then you got to deal with that responsibility and that weight in your head, and 
I don't know. It's just a lose lose for everybody. So please stop telling each other's business on social media. That is disgusting, tasteless, and get some fucking class if you're one of the people that's doing it. And if you see somebody doing it, tell them to stop. Reach out to your aunt, sister, grandma, and tell them, hey, I think you should take that down. You know, everybody doesn't need to know that. I think that's a little too personal, you know, to put on social media. You might need to go ahead and have that talk in person. Stand up. Mother. Stand up and say something. Yeah, because I don't like stuff like that. Now, I ain't going to lie. I am from the ghetto and from the hood. The lives be funny. Some of the lives do be funny when they be airing each other out and, you know, be a messy and talking and shit like that. But that's just the inner hood. I mean, they're probably going to go gonna go nowhere no time soon. Um, especially if I don't know y'all niggas. If I know y'all niggas, I'm probably, you know, my family would say something. But, yeah, if it's just strangers arguing on live, I'm going to definitely watch it. And I'm going to key about it. Are you fucking kidding me? Free entertainment. Hello? Uh, another thing, I'll wrap real quick, hair tips, so I want to give y'all um, a couple of hair tips, I don't know if any of y'all are struggling with like dandruff or, I don't know, you, it's hard for your hair to get, you know, detangled and, you know, stay moisturized and growing if it stops growing at all, some of the stuff that I've been trying, I've been using natural raw um, vinegar, I've been using raw vinegar, and basically you just like, spray it into your scalp massage it around you know comb it out and literally instantly fucking detangles i'm kind of convinced at this point that conditioner is made of vinegar the way it detangles your hair so smooth it's the weirdest shit ever and then it gives like a nice little shine of course everybody know vinegar stink but once you you know wash it you know move it through comb it out and do everything the moment that water comes in contact with vinegar the smell immediately goes away so you don't have to worry about your hair smelling like vinegar or even have to go behind it with any shampoo or anything after I use the vinegar, I've been doing clove water. So basically, you just buy a little clove from like, um, I don't know, whatever grocery store y'all niggas near. I like Food Line, but I'm here in Atlanta where they don't really have much of that, which fucking sucks. I miss you, Food Line. Shout out to y'all. But yeah, go to your local grocery store and get you some cloves, like the whole cloves, and put the motherfuckers in some water. I'll put the um, details at the bottom of how much you're supposed to put to how much water or whatever, but you boil it. And then you just let it sit, kind of like a tea bag. You stir it up, and then, yeah, you take that water and you just spray it, kind of like a leave-in conditioner. It smells so fucking good, y'all, and it make your hair just so smooth and moisture. And I ain't seen no fucking dandruff since, uh, honestly. So, yeah, I would definitely use that for hair tips. Another thing too, for the guys, if y'all been looking for something like a hairstyle that you're trying to get to last. What I've been doing is kind of tricking the system. So basically what I will do is I will wash my hair and everything, go get my hair done, right? Go get my hair done, I'll get two strand twist. After like a week and a half of the two strand twist, I will do a twist out. So the two strand twist is one style. And actually that's a lie. I get like five styles out of it. So what I would do for like the first week, I wear the two strand twist down, right? And then once they start to kind of get a little raggedy, because I don't like wearing do-rags. It is what it is. I just kind of lay down and go to sleep and pray and pray. Um, and so, yeah, do the two-strand twist for, like, the first week. And then after that, I do a twist out. So now I got a cute twist out. It's, like, it's curly, you know, whatever. And that works out. And then after that, once that started to look like shit, I'll take the twist out, which is, like, curly Hawaiian look. I'll take that motherfucker Put those, put that hair in like four ponytails, kind of like this. So now I got another hairstyle, four ponytails, rock that motherfucker about three, four days. Then after that, you wash it, blow dry it. Then I wear my afro out for like two, three days. Then I'll take my hair like this for another two, three days with the ponytails like this. And then I get it done again. And nigga, that's fucking what? We'll be up to like six, seven hairstyles out of one. And you're only paying for one of the motherfuckers. That's a two strand twist. Unless you learn how to do it yourself, which I used to, but. I ain't really got time to do my own hair. I hate, 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 hate doing my own hair. I do anybody else's. I started a couple of my friends' dreads, and I used to do two strand twists a lot on some people in when I was at a seven five seven. But I hate doing my own hair, even though it always come out good. But yeah, that was a couple of hair tips for y'all. I'm still not over painkillers. Y'all let the Sackler white. Cr mm, I can't. I don't know what I can't. You can't say Jesus fix it, but. I'm not over there yet. I'm still not over painkillers. Everybody, please stay off of Oxycontin. Stay off of Oxycontin. Stay off of Oxycontin. I don't even know if the niggas still selling it, but they didn't traumatize the fuck out of me watching painkillers. I'm probably going to watch it again and re depress myself. I don't know what is that cognitive. I don't know what that is. But um, 
I don't know. I'm just not over it, y'all. They fucked up so many people's families. It was little people. Nigga, you can fall and chip your fucking tooth. They're going to give you Oxycontin. You can skin your knee. They're going to give you Oxycontin. Where am I going to fall down the step? Well, she probably wouldn't need Oxycontin at that point. I don't know. They were just like little stuff. They was giving niggas Oxycontin for any goddamn thing. People were actually getting fucking addicted to it. And it was heroin. But now we're on fentanyl. Not we, but... They're on fentanyl now, so I guess I don't know which is the lesser of two evils, to be honest. Um, let's see what else do I have on here for y'all. Oh, I didn't like how. So y'all know how like it's like a big rap beef, uh, a big rap beef going on right now. I did not like how everybody was praising Chris Brown for saying what he said about Quavo, how he was saying that. He wish everybody was saying that they wish they would have took Quavo instead of Takeoff. Like they would rather Quavo would have died instead of Takeoff. Um, but when the, all Nikki said was when she was talking to Megan and Stallion, you lied on your damn mama. She didn't say the mama bitch was raggedy. That she used to suck dick. She was a whore or anything. She said you lied on your mother who is deceased. That's all she said. And she got so much backlash and flack, and they call her so many bitches and bitter babies and all this kind of stuff. But when Chris Brown said what he said, I wish she was dead, nigga, instead of that nigga. What? And he got so much praise for it. That was just so weird to me. Even though, Chris Brown, you ate that nigga up, for sure. Speaking of rap, you might as well dive on into the next one, which is Kendrick Lamar. Um, he recently put out a track called Euphoria, which was a diss against Drake. And I will start off by saying this. I fucked with push-ups, which was Drake's this towards Kendrick Lamar. But I want to say this. I didn't fuck with Drake's this song as a diss song. I like that as like an actual song. Like, had I never known Kendrick Lamar and I would have just heard that song randomly one day, I would have still liked that song because it's just a good song. It's catchy. It sounds good. Drop and give me. You better drop and give me. I thought I had my hair in, but I mean, not my hair in, but my, you know, two strand. Um, <laughs> oh, sidebar, that reminds me back. I was on Facebook Live in like 2018, and I had my um, thing go. And I think I just started like growing my hair out and had like a mini afro. And the guy was like, Are you transitioning? And I was like, What? And he was like, Yeah, are you transitioning? You're trying to be a woman. And it's because I had like the scar. I don't know. Anyway, he thought I was a transgender, but I'm not. Any whore. Um, Euphoria, yeah. So I like Drake's this song to Kendrick as a song, but I like Kendrick's this song as a this song because he ate that nigga up. And I'm about to get my little boy right here because I took some notes. I couldn't even keep the fuck up. He threw him to fucking shreds. The best thing you can do at this point, honestly, Drake, the only thing you can do when you see that nigga. That's all you can do. He fucked you up bad. When I tell y'all, he hate he hates Kendrick. I mean, Kendrick hates Drake so much so. The nigga looked at him and said, I hate the way you walk. I hate the way you talk. I hate the way you dress. I hate the way you say nigga. He's not even a, well, I'll let y'all be the judge of that. Do y'all think Drake should be able to say nigga or no? I'm probably leave that in the comment at the bottom. I want y'all to comment that. Do y'all think Drake should be able to say nigga? Because he's half black, right? enough which i don't know how black well black is black right i feel like drake is black ish give me a moment to fester his mom is white his dad is almost white i don't know drake maybe say like ninja Maybe say ninja from here on out until we can confirm exactly what the hell is going on with that. But he fucked you up. He said, how many more fairy tales? He he really played into that whole um, Drake ain't black thing. This nigga said, how many fairy tales until we had enough? Like, how many fairy tale stories did we got to hear? You know how Drake always got a story about him, you know, doing something with this girl. He named it a girl from over here, the Virginia Beach song, Chicago Freestyle. He always talking about these different, you know, crazy stories that he just been with all these different women and stuff like that and they're always black um 
And he said, how many more black features until you feel black enough? And another thing too, they had, y'all know that video came out with Drake saying like nigga in a white way. And it was super fucking weird and cringy. Um, he said that, <laughs> he said that um, with Drake standing beside six to red, it looked like two bad bitches standing beside each other. He said that, now this part he fucking ate because one thing about Kendrick, he not just gonna give you like an AB, ABC rap kind of thing. He actually went, he's very much lyrical and he's also in my top five. I, you know, say that all the time. Kendrick is definitely in my top five easily. Drake's not even in my, cause you know, when it comes to the lyricism, it's a little different for me because I'm a language person. Um, so when you able to do certain things with words, it kind of pleasures my brain in a different way. When you can, you know, different kinds of wordplay, you know, the double, triple entendres, the, when you're able to, and then another thing too, I'm very like audible. Like even when I watch other podcasts, I don't watch like the visual version of it. I listen to the audio. Like I'm very like audible. So even with the different cadences, voices, switches, flows and stuff like that, that kind of resonates with me differently and makes me appreciate the artist a lot more, which is why I like Nicki Minaj so much because she's a lot more animated and she's just fun to listen to sonically and audibly along with the lyricism. J. Cole as well. Um, so yeah, he said his dad is a killer. His dad is a killer. He wants to be a junior. They must have forgot the shit they done. Dementia must run in his family, but let it get shaky. I will park his son. So that's like park his son, Parkis, Parkinson. Disease, Parkinson's disease, dementia, dad, junior, family, which apparently they want to shot at Drake, which I thought, for the life of me, I had thought that Drake's dad had came out at some point talking about he had Parkinson's disease. I don't know. Maybe that was BS. Sorry to put it on that that was not true. But apparently they said that he was talking about Jay Prince, which is a nigga that make beats, I believe. So, yeah. It's been a long morning, y'all. I'm a little bit tired. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is Cinco de Mayo. Is coming up, and black people, we didn't took over that fucking holiday here in America. We have took over single day Mayo everywhere you go. All niggas is marketing is fucking tacos and tequila. Tacos <coughs> and tequila, <coughs> which I know that, you know, Hispanic people, you know, is living down for it. They making a fuck ton of money, especially from the restaurants alone, the bars and stuff like that, you know, off of us because we go so hard for that holiday. But I don't think a lot of black people know that the point of the holiday, them niggas are celebrating dead people. And if I was you, uh, Hispanic people, I wouldn't start telling them that. Because black people, we don't fuck around with spirits and shit like that. We don't keep that shit over there. So, yeah, I wouldn't tell them that if y'all want to keep profiting off of them. For shit sure. For shit sure. Um, yeah, otherwise, they are going to do something. They're going to find something else to do. We might start celebrating, I don't know, Six de Mayo or some shit like that just to keep the spirits in the, the day prior because I don't fuck around like that. But, yeah, I'm definitely going out for Cinco de Mayo. I cannot wait. Um, shout out to all of my Hispanic people, my listeners, and my Hispanic friends. Uh, I'm not sure if a lot of y'all know that um, I'm also – um, I speak Spanish as well. So, ya habla español, ya aprendí español cuando tenía como 15 años, yo creo. Yo aprendí a mí mismo. Um, ya traduzco uh, las canciones, uh, películas, cosas así. Uh, yo puse las notas, sobre todo el cuarto, uh, para recordar palabras y cosas así. Uh, Practiqué con mis amigos y... Ya no sé, todas las cosas así, no sé qué más. Pero sí, yo hablo español también. Y este verano yo voy a ir a México, Cancún, México, con mi familia. Entonces, I cannot wait to go and show my pussy in Mexico. I know a lot of people probably think it's uncomfortable when I say pussy, but I don't really care. It sounds good. And, um, yeah, I'll hit you with the microphone if you even think about coming my way, buckle. So, yeah, that was that. Cinco de Mayo, shout out to them. I cannot wait. Um, I have really been enjoying my new apartment. I cannot explain or tell y'all how 
much or I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. I suck at explaining if y'all cannot uh, tell that by now. But no, I cannot wait to go back onto my rooftop. I've really been like, if y'all, my friends are listening right now, none of my friends have been here to see me yet in Atlanta, I don't think. At fucking dickheads. I don't think. Outside of a Sandra. Yeah, them hoes ain't came to see me yet. But. When y'all come, we fucking lit. We are the fuck lit, 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 lit. I love the rooftop here. All I do is spend the whole goddamn night. Me and Alana, we get two beatboxes a piece. We roll like two blunts up, and we go on that rooftop, and we dance the motherfucking night away. And that's how I know I really fuck with her because a lot of people, you can't, a lot of people cannot just get me to like get up and dance and move around and stuff like that because people always, I don't know, I feel like they're like judgmental or weird or I don't know. I feel like like a laughing stock or something like that. And it's super uncomfortable uh, feeling, which is why I didn't used to dance. My cousin used to do dance and stuff in front of my um, family. I never felt comfortable enough to like do that kind of stuff. So when I started doing aerial fitness, that made me a lot more confident and, you know, myself and moving around and dancing and just feeling good and feeling sexy. And yeah, when I'm with certain people now, I realize that that is that feeling that I have, where it's just like carefree. I don't give a fuck who's looking. I don't give a fuck who's watching. Um, I don't care how we look. I don't care how we sound. We just out here to have a good time and be fucking lit. And if you can get somebody, you know, like that, that you can be around where you just like carefree and you're just out having a good fucking time and it's just good vibes, no argument, no weird shit, then you need to keep that person around because good times are hard to fucking come by. And I can tell you that now, especially with everything that's going on, nigga, it's made a first and I don't got it. I don't got it. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. And if you ain't willing to buy, my friend's selling it too. Both of us. However, we're going to tell her, we're selling her first. I'm like very much runner up, more so than like the madam, or what would you call it? And like the guy version. I'm like the mister. So I can get y'all a good piece of pussy for a pretty reasonable price. Um, and if that doesn't suffice, that I can give maybe a I can give like a third of a whole up. Not the whole whole, like a third of it. And I can do the tip from the front part. So that's the best I can offer. And that's gonna run you 40 bucks. Say like $40. No, I'm just kidding. I ain't selling no ass until I'm 30. I got three years to go, baby. Um, that is all the time. Oh, that's just literally not true. All right, so I'm gonna do my um my side topics, actually, y'all. Hairball, what the hell is this? Uh, <coughs> it's the cold coming back. Um, and also, this is a new different room. Shout out to my apartments for having all of these nice different rooms. It's probably going to have a different background for at least the next two, three episodes because I got so many rooms here for me to record. Um, yeah, shout out to them. Uh, do my three segments to get them out the way. The first one, of course, is kudos. I shout people out every episode. This week, um, everybody been saying I only do women but that's not true because i did cat williams one week you fucking massaging and sex of shit i don't know the word i was looking for is that misogynist when they only cater to the men sexist i don't know close to racist just tread lightly motherfucker um her so this week kudos is going to her h-e-r that is my girl um she sounds fucking amazing. The talent level is through the roof. She sounds good live. She sounds good on the songs. And her collaborations are amazing. She writes her own music. She does guitar. Um, she might play some other shit. I don't know. I really don't know. She might play some other stuff. But she has the kind of music that I feel like is literally for everybody. Like, she got the kind of music that young people can vibe to, older niggas can vibe to, people my age can vibe to. Um great collaborator i don't know why the nigga beside me is blowing leaves like he don't see me in here recording and his drop cord is kind of in here uh, i got half of mine to go and plug the goddamn leaf blower and lock the door you i was mean last episode so i'm gonna be nice on this one but he know better than that made me forget what i was saying her yeah so yeah she's amazing i want to i'm gonna give a couple of songs by her i would say my top songs are comfortable damage 
um, slide could have been with Bryson Tiller. Um, Girl Like Me with her and Jasmine Sullivan. And I first seen her, she opened for Chris Brown back in Raleigh, North Carolina. This was like 2019, 2020, right before COVID happened. And this when she was still doing like the weird, I don't want to show my face, which I get it. Um, you know, she wanted everybody to love her for her music. And so I do get that. And I fucks with that heavily. But I didn't know who the fuck she was. I was like, I don't know who this girl is, but she looks great and she sounds fucking amazing and she was doing focus i want to say she was doing focus the song focus at the time and i didn't know who this motherfucker was and i was like who is this she sounds fucking good but she wasn't like you know big big yet at least you know i didn't know her at the time and full circle moment now i'm a huge fucking fan that's happened to with me to tiana taylor that happened to me with sizzle that's happened to me with a couple of people actually where it was like damn if they only knew how huge of fans that I am now, and when I seen these niggas live, I was just like, oh, they're pretty. They sound great. And I just kept walking. Like, okay, I was going to, like, you know, the big act. I didn't know who these niggas was. So it's kind of wild. But, yeah, shout out to her. I did do an honorable mention as well to Marseille Martin. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. But, yeah, it's the girl who basically she's been writing, like, her own movie shows and stuff like that. And her fashion is fucking Ain't nobody touching her. I don't know if y'all need y'all need to look her up. M A R S A I, last name Martin. M A R T I N. Her first name might got two eyes. I'm not 100 percent sure, but yeah, she looks fucking amazing. I just went to her Instagram and I just was mesmerized by all of like the different outfits and she really switched it the fuck up. Shout out to her for her style, and uh, she's so fucking young, killing it. She's killing it, killing it, killing it in Hollywood. Um. Would you rather, my would you rather this week is, would you rather jump off of a 12-story building or get mauled to death by a, well, no, not to death. You don't get mauled to death. Um, would you rather jump off, 12 stories is kind of high. Because I want you guys, to, I want you to live. I just wanted to fuck you up. Let's do, <coughs> <coughs> let's do, because I'd be all the way up there. Let's do five stories. Would you rather jump off of a five-story building? You don't get to choose how you fall. You just launch off that motherfucker. Or would you rather get mauled by a bear? You don't die, but he might fuck you up. One of your eyes might end up over here. Your teeth might be gone. He might, I don't know, a titty might get chopped off. Um, I don't know. He might bite your fucking jaw off, and then from there you got to, I don't even know how the fuck you going to eat. You got to, you can't even suck a, <laughs> Jesus, fix it. Um, but yeah, I think I would personally do, I'm, well, I don't say bitch, I'm big mama. I'm a, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the bear. I'm going to do the, I'm going to take my chances with the bear because my thing is this, if he only scratches me up and get like a good bite, he could take a chunk of meat, left ass cheek. Cool. I don't use my ass anyway, unless it's for a good licking. Um, then that's fine. I can do that. Take a, what's this part called? Take this part. The calf, I don't really need that, honestly. And I'm good, you know, to be a peg leg. I'm fine with getting that fixed um, or replaced or amputated or whatever. If I can still get on the pole, are you kidding me? I just got to do one-sided tricks, so I'm fine with that. But to jump off of a building and break my goddamn neck or become paralyzed or I don't know, bitch, break both of my goddamn legs. Fuck the one. If you lose both of them, what the hell are you going to do? <laughs> Break your back, you with a back brace for the rest of your life. You can get really get fucked up from that jump, and you don't know how you're going to land either. I'm taking for a shit sure. I am taking um, I'm taking my chances with the bear. I ain't jumping off of shit. And I'm scared of heights, which might seem kind of weird, even though I do aerial fitness. But that's why I like doing aerial fitness, because heights scare me, and I'm kind of drawn to stuff that scare me, like raggedy-ass men. See what I did there. All right. And last thing, to, <laughs> last thing today that we're going to do is word of the day. Um, word of the day is no. And that is in the fuck. Oh, and I want us to start using this a lot more. And 
A lot of people might think, oh, well, you know, he's trying to be mean. No, not to be mean, but to protect your own sanity and protect your own integrity and to protect your own goddamn pockets. Hello? Start telling motherfuckers, no, no, I don't have $20 until we get paid on Friday. No, I cannot give you a ride to the store even though it's only five minutes away. No, you cannot stay out of my house. No, you I ain't got no more food stamps for you, baby. No, you cannot go with me to the show. No, you cannot go with me on vacation. No, you can't have none of my drink. You can't have none of my food. No, we can't have a game night because I have to study. Just tell them fucking no. It doesn't matter what it is. Just practice the motherfucker for no reason. Somebody walk up to you. Hey, you having a good day today? No. Just say no for no reason. Just practice it. And once you get good at it, after a while, once you get good at it, you're going to start differentiating how and when is appropriate to tell a motherfucker no and when to tell them yes. Because I realize uh, I have become a yes man for quite a while. Even It would be shit that I would be doing that I know, you know, is either going to fuck me up financially or I have another type of obligation or I know that I should be doing, you know, this instead of that. But just because somebody asked me to do something. I would do everything in my power to try and do it when I know I ain't got no business fucking doing it because it's going to fuck me up. So you got to, when I say tell, start telling people no, it's more so start putting yourself first. And then if you can help a motherfucker, help a motherfucker. But put yourself first. If you can't do it, if, if it's going to put you in like a weird situation, then no. And not just a weird financial situation, a weird mental situation. You taking on so, another obligation for another motherfucker when... Grandma just died last week. You done lost your job, your car, and you don't know how the fuck you're going to pay rent this month. But you done told three different motherfuckers yes. Um, and you know goddamn well you can't fulfill neither one of those obligations. And if you do, it's going to fuck you up even more mentally. So, no, start telling people no 1,000% and watch how easily it improves your life. And if you don't know how to tell niggas no, change the number and block them. If they call you. And be like, oh, well, you know, I didn't get you the number. I mean, calling you up and texting you and something, something, something. I'm like, oh, shit, I thought I sent you my number. Yeah, lie. Hello? My cousin did that to me last week. She go. No, I'm just kidding. She said that she sent me her number. And, oh, she thought she sent me her number, but she really didn't. Because I was texting her, like, hey, are you okay? And I may or may not have asked to borrow $20. So maybe she pulled a me on me. Pop goes the weasel. But guess what? She learned how to say no. Uh, <laughs> She learned how to say no, guys. But that's about it today. That's all I have for y'all. I don't have anything else. I'm going to do another episode here pretty soon. Uh, this episode is May the 1st. So I'm going to probably post this episode on Friday. And then I'm going to do an episode on Cinco de Mayo. It's going to be more like of a vlog style podcast. It's still going to be a podcast for sure. But I'm going to incorporate a lot of videos into the podcast so y'all can kind of see how we went. For single day, we gonna get fucked up, and we got fucked up yesterday off some motherfucking rain. That shit was what twelve dollars. Got us a little eighth. She got her little black her mouth, and we was on that rooftop chilling like a motherfucker. The four dollar tacos and the six dollar piece I was telling y'all about, and we downtown niggas ain't got no one for shit. I need some friends actually. If you in Atlanta, hit me up. We need to hang out. I need more friends because Alana's going to get sick of me soon. So that's what I'm up against. I love y'all and um, keep tuning in. Love, peace, hair grease. I don't know where I get that weird ass saying from. Actually, my principal used to say it back in elementary school. He's also the principal that helped me back in the fourth grade because he was yelling at me back and forth in my face. And he was like yelling, yelling, yelling. And the stupid son of a bitch ended up like spitting in my face. Um, not like literally spitting in my face, but he kind of spit when he talking. I'm like, hey, can you just stop yelling at me because you're spitting when you're talking? He's like, well, who do you think you're talking to? I'm like, talking to you because you're spitting when you're talking to me. And so I couldn't take it anymore, and I finally hit him. And then I was in the fourth grade again, so. Not stupid, just not that trained. And don't forget about the word of the day from last week. Niggas are slow. Love y'all.